In this video I'm going to show you how to do photorealistic renders. Um, so this is the ring <coughs> excuse me, that we used in the last video. So the customer wants to see, he's, you know, he's, he's decided, yeah, that's what I want. Um, so we need to render it. So let's just go through a few things. Under render, there's the word render options. And in here, we decide on the quality of the render. Um, it maxes out at 1920 by 1080, which is perfect for big screen TVs. Um, so 1920 by 1080 will give you, will you know, fill the whole frame uh, when you render. As in, this is what I did in the last video, and that just shows you, you know, absolute full screen. Um, nope. Um, let's just get rid of that. So props, we'll come back to that in a sec. You've got ground plane and what you have to imagine is is the ring is sat upon an invisible sheet which then you then apply surfaces or, or pictures to that. So you've got granite, granite black, light marble, marble one, uh, absolutely tons of things. Um, I can't even pronounce that. Natural wood, uh, natural suede, straw, there's, there's all sorts in here. Um, I've just noticed white felt, white matte, white reflective. They're, they tend to be the areas that I live um, for my renders. Uh, white to black's pretty cool and, and it ends back there. So let's have a look at white matte. Um, the environment is kind of an invisible dome that's over the top of your ring. So imagine your ring that's inside a dome and on that dome on the inside is a picture of the room that you're currently sat upon or sat in so it's a 360 degree view of that view that is then projected to the ring to create what looks like that ring was photographed within that room so I'm going to go for white blur on white matte uh, save renders two folders. You know you can save all your renders to a particular place, which is a, a nice little feature. Render props on alpha channel. Um, so that's so you can uh, turn them off at a later dates. So it's more for Photoshop people. That uh, render ground plane is alpha and the same again. <clears throat> so let's just render this as is. So I'm going to close that down and click render. So this is my render finished and I'm going to do another one of these and, and let show you how that works um, it's done 1920 by 1080 um, so I recommend 1920 1080 just purely and simply because it's the max uh, and I personally prefer it I think if you're in front of a customer doing a render I would maybe throttle it back a bit um, so the 640 by 480 now when I'm doing renders for print, depending on your printer, um, so what I'm trying to say is 400 by 400, uh, 500 by 500, 700 by 700, the matching uh, values here give a square render, which is, I think, the maximum resolution on that is. Is it 1200 by 1200? No, that's not actually there. 1000 by 1000. If I was doing it for a website, I would probably do it on that. Um, and I can actually save that as a default. So for continuity, once I've got a combination going that I like, I can then save that as my um, as my favourite style. Now these little things that are whizzing around, these little blocks, if you can see them, hopefully you can see it while I'm following it around with my mouse. This is why we stipulate by an i7 quad core. The reason being is that gives you four little brains to build the uh, render, plus another four because it uses hyperthreading. It's not schizophrenic, um, and that's why we always say go for an i7 quad core because y your renders will render far quicker. Now to save it, you click save image, give it a name, and then save it, and then you can view it in the normal manner. Let's just click save again a moment. The file format I reckon re recommend bitmap um, uh, for for just normal customers. Uh, JPEGs are a little bit smaller 
Um, so it's just a case of trying either. If you're going to send it to Photoshop, I would probably save it as a target. And those people who know Photoshop will understand what that means. It means that the ring will be um, as a set on a separate layer to the background and kind of compiled within the product. So that means you can take out the background, especially if you wanted to advertise on Amazon uh, and sell your jewelry on there. Um, okay, so let's just get rid of that. Let's go and pick another ring and try some more um, styles. So let's go to search. Let's go for this jazzy little number to say no to that. Let's try a few more features. So this is the ring that I'm going to play around with. Let's just zoom it in a little bit. Let's just render it as is. So that's that finished uh, and rendered. That took a few secs because it was quite a lot for it to churn through. So let's just have a look at the render options. Let's change something out and see what uh, difference was differences we get. So let's change it to let's try this blur studio. See there's a lot of black in there. Let's try um, something quite different. White to black reflective. And then let's render that. So if you just bear with me. So the render train is just pulling into the render station and we'll be coming to a stop in a moment. So there's another look. This is very dark. This is all to do, all to do with the uh, environment uh, and the ground plane in conjunction with each other making this, this render quite dark. Um, you know, some people might find this pleasing, especially if it was for some quite masculine jewellery, and think it was uh, quite dark in itself. So, let's see what else we can do with this. So let's go to the render options, and there's a button here which is lay flat. Now some rings lend themselves far better to laying flat. So let's just get rid of that render a moment. Let's just have a look over here. The ring is now laid flat. I quite like the way that that's uh, fallen, to be quite honest. So let's render that and see what that looks like. So this is this render laid down. Um, so it's still quite dark. Notice the reflection of the stone from underneath, which is I always find amazing. Now if I was to render this with a different environment, so let's go to render options. Um, light tent is, is one of my favorites. Let's see what that looks like. So this is the different environment and you can see straight away this, this is quite extreme difference in that it's a lot whiter, a lot more bleached out and to be quite honest I, I quite like it. It's maybe a little bit too much over here but the diamond seems to really pop. Uh, looks, I think looks better. But like I say, in these render options it's just a case of, let's just get rid of that a moment, it's just a case of playing around with this, these different um, things that you can do to this, to, you know, to get the look that you're after. So let's just pop this back up, let's just close this out, let's get another ring. This is uh, proving quite time consuming from a rendering point of view. Uh, but for just this video, we'll go for something a little bit simpler. Uh, let's have a... ooh, no. I don't like the shank on that. I'm sure I could change the shank, but for the purposes of this video, I'm going to have a look at something else. Let's go back to collections, go to my favourite Mr. Three C's. And... Let's see. Let's have, oh, I like this one. Let's have a look at this one. Say no to that. Let's have a look at some of the other options available to us uh, in the render options. 
So this ring is uh, by far one of my favourites. I just love the helter-skelter kind of feel to this. And it has a matching band. I haven't looked at the matching band. Very nice. Yeah, cool. Right, let's just turn off that matching band. I'm looking at this too closely. Let's have a look at this a little bit closer. Let's go into the render options and if we go looking at the props now what you'll notice is when I click these props nothing appears on screen. Um, there is technical reasons for that but it's, it's one of those things you get used to. Uh, so props material primary I just want to have a look for a canvas. So we'll go for that white canvas. Prop secondary material. Uh, leave that one because I'm pretty sure there isn't a secondary. And the floor or the ground plane that it's sat upon. Let's go for something quite contrasty. Uh, we'll go for that mm, red fabric. Let's see what this looks like. Probably not the best choices of um, materials I've used on here, but I think you get the idea of what's going on. But wow, does that ring look good? Um, it's reflecting the red from the base. It's reflecting this. Uh, that looks really real. I really do like this. Now, how I've got that posed was kind of a lucky guess in a way uh, with regards to that prop. Now, if I was to click the pedestal, which I, I find quite cool, I would go for something that, that kind of makes sense for that pedestal. So I would maybe go for um, something that, I don't know, um, let's see what we've got. We've got that elite onyx that's granite, granite black. Let's try granite black and then click render and see what that looks like. So previously I uh, posed it with the cloth going through but that didn't really work so I've had to zoom out a little bit to get to give the give you an idea of what this sat upon. Um, I could zoom out even further but then it becomes more about the prop and less about the ring. But these props can be used for all sorts of advertising um, media. I would maybe have done a, a different black to white background on here but th this this looks incredible, it looks so real in relation to marble. So let's have a look at some of the other props. Let's get rid of that. Let's go back to render options and let's see what else we've got. Ring tray, ring box is a very popular one. Um, the outside I would either have as a shiny plastic, uh, like black plastic, you know, like a piano, black piano. I'm going to go for wood today. Um, inside I'm going to go for, uh, there's one there called Latte, hmm. let's just have a look a bit further along, what I'm looking for is fabric, um, silk bone, hmm. let's have a look at that, why did that bug out on me? Go back over to here. Turn felt silk bone. Keep that that the background. I'm gonna have it on that white to black reflective and I'm gonna click render. So as you can see this didn't go very well. Wah, wah, wah. So let's get rid of that. Let's give this a little bit of a twist. Let's zoom out a little bit. Remember I said if you get a bit turned around just click perspective. Pose it as you want to see it. Uh, zoom out a little bit more. And I know that seems quite far away but this prop needs this real estate. Okay, that's better. That's posed correctly. You know it's a ring box, although you're not seeing the whole of the ring box. 
uh, the rings in this in in here and you know I think that looks pretty cool would I do this on a regular basis maybe not I would do it for uh, advertising and maybe do the odd one um, like that uh, do you need to change all your boxes to match what's available in the product <laughs> that's up to you um, but I would maybe consider doing so just via counter sketch models um, but I think that looks pretty good and again to save you just click the little diskette button here give it a name and save saving as a bitmap so last but not least let's just go back to render options and we're gonna go all the way to here and click none to disable that to do what I want to do next I'm gonna click close and we're gonna click the hand design try on so when I click that the hand appears in a few seconds it applies a flesh tone to that so let's just have a look at what that does now the default setting is my preferred setting um, and believe me there's quite a few things you can do with this the sleeve you can't interact with um, I tend to personally position it in such a way where I can't see the sleeve or minimize the amount of sleeve what is this used for primarily is to see or to show the customer the kind of scale of the ring and how it's going to look upon their hand. Not everybody is very good at visualizing what something it's going to look like. So you can just move all the way around and just see what this ring is going to look like. You could chance your hand, so to speak, and bring out the matching band. If that's the wrong way round, then you can flip the locations so the wedding band is in the correct position, i.e. flipped over. Especially with these asymmetrical designs, that's a, a really nice feature now you can change the skin tone for various ethnicities going all the way up to here and all the way down to here you can change the finger polish yes you can change the finger polish of which there is many tones and I tend to find the chaps like playing around with this more than the ladies believe it or not which is a little bit worrying um, let's just go up and go back to French polish. Now I'm going to zoom in a little bit. I'm just going to pull that over and I'm going to render it. So to render this button. And I think you'll agree the results are pretty lifelike. Um, I think that looks pretty good and if you were going to give the customer a few photographs to take away with them obviously with some money changing hands uh, to uh, pay for the printing and to pay for your time and that also uh, kind of ties them to you hopefully they'll, they'll come back and purchase the ring but I would probably want to take a deposit anyway if they were going to be taking photographs away but that's uh, purely and simply up to you so still on the subject of the of the hands the gentlemen don't need to uh, be left out on this so let's I'm just going to go to one of my job bags or my um, design managed and I've got one called blokes stuff believe it or not and let's bring out this ring here so let's change this uh, W that'll work so let's put this on the hand and let's change this gender to male and then I'm going to click OK my machine was just thinking about that so now I've got that ring on a gent's hand just to show him what that uh, would look like. I'm not going to uh, render that, I just wanted to show you what that would look like. Now before I leave you and go on to my next video, um, there is other things you can do. You can change the finger in which uh, the ring is on. So you could go for a pinky ring. Um, for a chap, maybe this finger. Um, 
if he was one of those cooler chaps, you might want to wear it on that one. Or if he was a bit goth, you might want to put it on his thumb. Who knows? Pinky ring, I think. Or wedding band. Probably the most common for a chap. Um, nail polish wise, is that decent? Oh no! <laughs> you can change the nail polish of the um, chap, which is uh, cool. Okay, that's everything for rendering. Hope to see you soon on my next video. Bye-bye.